to look at the exercises. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I have uh, just uh, updated this assignment number three, the group exercise. <coughs> and uh, you can see how I've placed everybody in different groups. Uh, there's one person I wasn't sure if he's still in the class, so I put him in the group three, and group three is a little bit bigger, but he may not actually be active anymore. <coughs> um, and the, the exercise is that um, <coughs> you're going to be both a consulting company and somebody that requires the services of a consulting company, your business. So, um, <coughs> so each group is going to act as a consultant and as a customer uh, for another group. And the, uh, the task that you have to do is you, you're going to participate in the information architecture process, doing the <coughs> research strategy and design phases and um, you will need to, in the research phase, try at least three methods for research. In the strategy phase, produce a strategy report. And in the design phase, uh, do something which would include the production of blueprints and wireframes. And you should, uh, you will need to be able to deliver a presentation of 10 minutes on the report and the design. And you will also need to send in all of the documents that go along with each of these phases that you've produced with each of these phases. So this is the big uh, end project, you could say. <coughs> and it's due on November 11th, which is not a long time from now. So <laughs> what I want to do today is uh, go over chapters 15 and 16, which is on the syllabus uh, in the first part of the lecture. And then in the second hour, uh, I can allow you to work on your own, to begin working on this project, because there's not a lot of time left. And um, <coughs> if you, uh, you can work on it here in the classroom. And then I can be available if you have any questions. But you're just going to be in the beginning uh, stage of this. But uh, today is the 29th, so that's like two weeks away. And it's a lot of work to do in two weeks, so I think you will need to get started on it. I, I would recommend that you get started on this as soon as possible. <coughs> OK. Um, and the, the lectures, I've been putting up the, let me see, I've been trying to up update this frequently and um, I still need a copy of exercise number one, please send that. And the group, I don't know if you're here right now, these guys, no. Uh, they need to send me their extra documents, their notes that were given along with the presentation. So I have tried to uh, say, say this in an email, but I don't know if people have uh, seen it, but I would like to see that. Okay. And then this is exercise number three. 
That's what I was asking about. Okay, let me say, go back to this. So, if you have a green, it's pass. Yeah. Uh, comments are still there. It's just about it. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yes, you sent it in, and I forgot to take this away. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, and I did that in different places. So, yeah, these are all okay now. I, I need to correct that. Uh, but uh, yeah, these two. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just close this. Uh, also, a quick question: What is Gnosis ID? Excuse me. What is Gnosis ID? Gnosis. Yeah. Where did you see that? <laughs> uh, the group uh, task assignment. The last one, the assignments. Uh, I've heard of Seymour. I've heard of. Uh, the, the oh, oh, I see. I've heard of but I actually looked up these sites, so let me just. I didn't understand what you said. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Okay, it's. Um, let me just see. I'm going to find it. Um, let me see. Exercises. Um, this one. I have an English site. They <laughs> have an English site too, <laughs> or a Norwegian site. Um, I looked it up before, I don't understand this. Nexus ID. <laughs> I can't uh, find them. Would it have been possible to get a more uh, broadly known option? Yeah, 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 you can uh, change it. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was a Norwegian company. I just can't find it now. It's just that I've never heard the word, so. <sighs> <laughs> uh, I believe it was a consulting company, but now. Just that they were in a con consulting company. Uh, okay. Uh, alchemy and tarot. That's uh, promising. Hmm? Alchemy and tarot. Let's consult the cards. No. Um, okay, but uh, yeah, pick another company. 
And okay. What's, where, where do we find options? Well, <laughs> these are all different types of companies. This was an animal clinic. This was uh, telecommunications. This is uh, fashion. So I thought it could be something like a consulting company or a bank or something like that, something with an IT service. And it probably would be good if you pick it now because the person that has to be your um, advisor needs to know this too. So who is advising? So yeah, group one is here and they're going to be consulting you. I'll uh, try to remember the name. But what is the type of company? It's an IT consultant. In Norway? Yeah, and it's uh, quite huge. I'm sure you know it. Okay. They have a responsibility for the bank systems. Uh, um. Envy? Envy, yeah. How do you spell it? E N Y. E N V 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 Y. Let's see. E N V Y. Like that. That's not it. <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, it every. Uh, I think it's E V R. Yeah. There you go. This one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is, we're going to change it to that. Okay. Okay? And uh, if there's someone in your group not here, you have to tell them. Yeah, we can tell them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you, you guys have made note of that as well, because you're going to be consulting them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So we'll just get started with this one. Okay, so I've just made a few additions to the previous year's slides because there was only one slide in, on each chapter. So, um, <coughs> chapter 15 is about uh, building your AI, your IA team, and uh, uh, chapter 16 is about tools and software. Uh, the first thing that uh, they talk about is the destructive acts of creation. And the authors point out the problem that a lot of times when companies are redesigning their their websites, um, they just want to destroy everything, take everything from before and forget about it and just start over again. And uh, this can be a problem because um, <coughs> they're not really basing their new design on anything they learned from the past. So they would recommend rather that you have some more evolutionary approach to change and that you take some of the lesson learned from the past before designing the strategy for the, the new uh, online site. So this uh, 
circular point is the point of problem, that there shouldn't be a complete break, but there should be some continuity. <laughs> One of the uh, important points made in this chapter is about the uh, difference between fast and slow layers of the information architecture. They say that uh, this is similar to trends in society, where you have um, certain things change very slowly, like nature and culture, and uh, sometimes the political government changes slowly. Uh, but as you go up this um, scale, you have things that change more quickly, where you have fashion and art changing the most quickly. Uh, the same analogy can be made on the information architecture. So you start off with, uh, you have um, faceted uh, classification schemes. And actually, uh, <coughs> I'm going to put on the lights. This is figure 15.3 in your book. You can take a look at this. And I'm going to rewrite it on the board and then put in a couple extra comments. We could talk about this. So. So first we have the scale, and the slowest is at the bottom, and then at the top is the fastest. And at the bottom we have a faceted classification system. Or seams, schemes. And uh, this part, they recommend should be very stable. And what this is, is it's hierarchies, uh, the hierarchy system of your site. Then we have embedded navigation systems. This should also be stable. It should not change much. And these would include things like taxonomies. This is the uh, hierarchies. Yeah. And then the like indexes. And search systems. And um, the next layer up is enabling technologies. And these are, um, you might change them, but they're expensive to change. So you usually don't change them very often. And these have to do with technologies like uh, content management systems. search engines and portal software. <coughs> so then we have uh, controlled vocabularies. Uh, 
these are things that evolve. So there is change, but there's like a continuous change. They change somewhat slowly. And, um, okay, so these are like uh, terms. So we have uh, terms that evolve with products and the business offerings. So if you have something that describes your products or your services, what you do, uh, this description and these words that you use to describe the products and services are going to change over time. But they change uh, slowly and continuously. And then we have uh, adaptive finding tools. These also undergo continuous change. And like um, continuous, you kind of evaluate and then change. So. So this would be like uh, project specifications, uh, guides. The actual indexes. Collaborative filtering. This is the actual prod produced indexes, and this is the, the structure of it. And then you have content services and interfaces. These are the fastest changing It could be daily or even shorter And this is uh, site content and services and uh, tweaks to the user interface. Okay. So here we have, uh, these are slow changes and these are fast changes. So your, your hard structure and systems are slower to change. The vocabularies and the um, guidelines and the, the actual <coughs> indexes, words, and the um, collaborative filtering, these are, and the content on the site all changes more quickly. 
open. Can you still see this? It's okay. We'll leave the light on. <coughs> yeah. Step aside for a second. Okay. The easy way of taking notes. You can zoom in. <laughs> but it's, it's, it says what it says in the book also. <laughs> No, it's in the book. I mean, I just wrote out what the chapter discusses. So, um. okay. The next point that's talked about is um, the concept of project versus program. Uh, it, if you're changing something on the web, and it's like considered a project if you're changing your site. Uh, this might be something that's uh, like they will take six to 18 months but you still need to see the big picture and you need to see how it fits within the existing structure and the existing framework. So they're just po pointing out that um, <coughs> you need to uh, see the big picture and be able to integrate that into the strategic framework of the company and look at the company's existing uh, organization and navigation systems and search systems. And then a program is something that has a longer term focus and it focuses on changes in administration, maybe any changes in employees and a, and a process of continuous improvement and alignment with the business's long term vision and content continuity of service, which will go from uh, what is already in operation today to what's going to be in operation in the future. So it's just, you can have many projects that exist within a program and the program is a longer term perspective. <coughs> uh, the chapter discusses whether you should um, buy or rent, whether you should hire consultants that are there for a short period of time to work on a particular project or whether you want to hire professionals that are going to be part of your employee, uh, your employees part of your organization. And there's different uh, perspectives on this. Um, they point out if you have a, a project, uh, you might use consultants, but not only consultants, because you need to get uh, people that are maybe specialists on the particular uh, project, but you still need people that are part of the organization. And if you uh, look at politics, they said sometimes hiring a consultant uh, will help establish the internal credibility of the project. So it can be advantageous to hire consultants. And then in terms of perspective, the consultants can bring a fresh perspective to the organization on, and what they're trying to accomplish. And so uh, also the consultants will usually draw on best practices. So um, all of these uh, are arguments for hiring consultants, these top three. But they say sometimes you want to actually uh, add to your in-house professional staff. And uh, the reasons for doing that might be uh, that you're working with a program, not just a project. In the program, it might be more cost effective to hire a full-time employee that will be there for the long-term duration. So whereas the project is a short-term scale, programs have a longer-term scale, and you might want to hire new employees. And then in the business context, it says that uh, the in-house information architectures have richer understanding of the business. They've been with the business a while. They understand uh, the vision and the goals of the company. And you don't have to spend time on introducing this to the in-house uh, information architecture for, to the full-time employee. So this is an argument for, for increasing the staff. And then in terms of relationships and in-house information architecture can build long-term relationships with other employees in other departments. So this is also um, an, advent, an advent, advantage uh, for hiring somebody as an in-house professional. 
So these uh, three programs in business contexts and relationships are all arguments for hiring uh, in-house professionals, whereas these three are arguments for hiring consultants. <coughs> the company may also come up with uh, some ad hoc projects who are not necessarily part of the long-term programs. And in this case, it would be good to maintain a budget within the company so that you can hire consultants. Uh, so the budget would allow, um, and the consultant would allow the staff to be exposed to new, fresh perspectives, which was um, part of the perspective argument. So even though you might have an argument for consultants on a particular project and for hiring somebody for the long-term perspective, you might still maintain a budget to hire consultants for ad hoc projects. <coughs> they talk about uh, uh, the dream team. Oh, what, oh, I'm missing something. Oh, yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, the dream team means that uh, there's a lot of, they've talked about these positions before. There's a lot of different types of expertise that goes into uh, the information architecture. And if you could have access to all of these specialists, uh, this would be uh, the dream, the great, the best team possible. But many companies cannot afford all of these specialists, but maybe needs, that's also the part of the, the point of being able to hire consultants is because you get people that might specialize in areas where you need specialization. And there's a lot of different areas of, um, uh, that you need to be able to get access knowledge from these areas. So you have the source designer, control vocabulary, indexing, interaction. There may be someone that has some experience in all of these areas, but a lot of times um, you can't find some, somebody that has everything. So you need to, to, uh, to maybe hire somebody for a short period of time for one of the exercises or one phase of the project, and then you hire somebody else for another phase of the project. Uh, chapter 16 is, um, is about uh, tools and software. And um, you had all used or looked at the possibility of using tools in your exercise number two. And some people have talked about tools that are used with certain parts of um, the, the architectural design process. Uh, so these are just different categories of tools that they discuss in the chapter and they also have links to examples of these uh, tools and some of these may be still available and some may not be active, the links. So you need to just uh, maybe be able to look up and find other um, tools that can be out there uh, for your next uh, project because you're asked to to actually um, mention tools. <coughs> um, one category is automated categorization. Automated categorization is uh, meant to automatically assign metadata to documents. And this is something that if you can automate, uh, this will uh, enable your documents to be more easily found. But the problem is you can't do this uh, manually, so you need some sort of a system to be able to extract the metadata from the documents. So, uh, and also automated taxonomy generation. These are uh, tool, if you can find tools to do this, then this is a great advantage uh, for, your, for your indexing and searching system. And then you have search engines that usually provide indexing and searching. And we had talked about using Google as a search engine, even on your individual site, that's uh, possible. And uh, the Saurus uh, management uh, tools, there should be a space here. Uh, this is uh, the development and management of controlled vocabularies. So something that automates this uh, process. Uh, portal and enterprise knowledge platforms, collaborative filtering tools and portal solutions. Um, uh, there may be uh, different types of um, uh, free software for that as well. Uh, content management systems, managing 
the content from the authoring to the editing to the publishing stage. So this is all stage of content uh, production and uh, management. And then analytics uh, using software to evaluate the website, uh, who's using it, uh, where are they, um, how often are they coming, what are they doing, which, what pages are they looking at. So there is some free software out there that allows you to, to do that. Uh, diagramming software creates uh, visuals and uh, wireframes and blueprints. I pointed out a <coughs> website in the previous lectures that points to some software that creates these wireframes and blueprints. And you'll need to do this for your exercise too. So you can look at that website. <coughs> Prototyping tools, uh, interactive frame, wireframes and clickable prototypes. Uh, this is a more advanced um, type of diagramming tool, but it allows you to make changes and to see the effects of the changes. <coughs> and then user research, online court card sorting uh, programs or remote usability testing. And there was also some of these uh, applications that were on the, on the web page that I pointed out in the previous lecture. And then the Ask an Engineer, they talk about that um, if you hire somebody from a vendor firm or you speak to them, uh, they'll tell you about their products, whether what, it does, what they do well, what they do poorly, or what they could do. So <coughs> this is the main point of this chapter is to point out that there's different types of software and tools that can be used in the design process. And these are all the kinds of uh, the categories of tools that are, could be helpful. And we pointed out the last time a uh, website that, that points to some of this software uh, that does, uh, creates blueprints and wireframes, that helps you to do analytics, uh, that helps you to do card sorting and uh, visualization software. And then uh, there's also uh, uh, search engines like Google that you can adapt and, and use on your site for free with advertising. And uh, the probably the more expensive things that are not necessarily free are things like content management systems and the source um, uh, tools. But some of these might also be available. And I just wanted to um, point out some resource pages. They're not tools, but they're information that can tell you a lot more about controlled vocabularies and about metadata. So I found on this um, Getty uh, website, there's two online books available. You can see the whole book. And the one book is Introduction to Controlled Vocabularies. And this one uh, tells you about controlled vocabulary is an organized arrangement of words and phrases used to index content or, and or to retrieve content through browsing or searching. It typically includes preferred and variant terms, which we talked about uh, previously, and has a defined scope or describes a specific domain. The purpose of the controlled vocabularies is to organize information provide terminology to catalog and retrieve information. So it allows you to be able to find uh, your, if you have products, being able to find it in the search and be able to help the customer to be able to find what they're looking for. So when I was looking for this term for this company, I couldn't find the right term because, um, well, that, that was different. I was like looking for something that maybe is, I didn't have the exact uh, company address. But uh, if I was searching for a product or something, I would be able to, if the company supported a controlled vocabulary, this would help me to locate the product. And uh, I recommend that you take a look at this if you have questions about controlled vocabularies because it really goes into great detail about that. <coughs> and then uh, introduction to metadata. Again, we had said before, metadata is data about data but it's actually much more than this. And that is uh, the structured nature of metadata is important. By accurately modeling the most essential attributes of the class of information objects being described, 
Metadata in aggregate can serve as a catalog, a distillation of the essential attributes of the collection of information objects, thereby becoming a useful tool for using and managing that collection. So this is, metadata is finding out actually the essential attributes of a particular set of objects. That's the key right here. So it's the, it identifies, distills whether the, the attributes you need to be able to locate the object. <clears throat> and says that in the context of this chapter, metadata can be defined as a structured description of the essential attributes of an information object. So this is uh, by Tony Gill, and this is also an entire online book with uh, many um, examples of metadata and how you make use of that. <coughs> Another helpful resource is on um, uh, research-based web design and usability guidelines is an example of what uh, the US government has been developing as uh, guidelines for web design. And um, this is also available in a, as an online book in a uh, database. And this is the picture of the interface for the database chapters. And it's also available as an older version as a, in a PDF. And you can see it has things <coughs> that are kind of what we've been talking about. So it has uh, the design process. It also has some of the basics like um, common design of um, browsers, but then we get down to things like uh, how do you design the home page? What is the page layout, uh, navigation, scrolling and paging, head titles and labels, who we talked about labels, uh, text appearance, list, and then different types of graphics and images. So content organization, search, usability testing. These are all uh, very useful concepts. And I just thought we could just take a look at this briefly. You can see how the interactive database works. So for example, if we go to the home page, it talks about uh, the introduction and why is it important and then um, enable access to the home page, create a positive first impression, communicate your website values and purposes. Um, let me see. So if I just look at the introduction. Um, let me see. So it says the first action of most users is to scan the home page for titles and major headings. Requiring users to read large amounts of prose texts can slow them constantly and are avoid and they may avoid reading it altogether. And then here's a good example. It says clean prose uh, free design allows users to quickly discern the primary heading and the subheadings without distraction. Of, uh, of the paragraphs. I can't read the rest right now. But um, so then this is just an example and then you can go back and look at, well, there's something that was in here about clutter. Uh, maybe this in here. Page layout. Mm. Oh, yeah, avoid clutter displays. So, this one says um, clutter is when excess items on the page lead to degradation of performance when trying to find certain information. Studies have shown that users can find what they're looking for more quickly in space and uncluttered displays. On the uncluttered display, all important uh, search targets are highly salient, clearly available. 
One study found that test participants tend to agree on which displays were least cluttered and those that were most cluttered. And here's an, a poor example. And this uh, is like the display has too much information and it's not able to distinguish um, uh, where, what, what is the organization when things are, uh, what's important and what is not important, where the search tools are. So, so this uh, can, can give you tips like on labels, for example. Mm. Okay. Okay, so that's um, it's just a resource that you can use. Hmm. Let me just see. Oh, here we go. Okay, so that was that. Okay, so um, let me just. Okay, so it was at the end of um, the note set on chapter 10, 11, and 12. There was the resource page for the tools, and these are the tools that might be uh, useful also in your project. So you could take a look at the tools on this page. And there were different tools for um, like diagramming and uh, creating um, uh, blueprints and wireframes and c cord sorting. So like these are all kinds of things that can be downloaded for free. Okay. Okay. So <coughs> the, that's what I wanted to cover for chapters 15 and 16. And now you can have a break and when you come back if you want to get started on your project would be a good time to do that. And then uh, we can also continue next week. Okay.